Hi, this is Jay from Encodian, and in this video, we're going to show you how to use the new Create QR Code action as uh, part of the Encodian connector to, uh, to create some QR codes, of course. Um, we've got two flows. We're going to show one where we've got a SharePoint document, proof PDF, usual uh, stuff, and we're going to take um, the, a URL value from a metadata field, build the QR code, and embed it in the document as a watermark. So that's demo one. And the second demo we're going to try and quickly run through is uh, getting a QR code value, turning that into a data URI, uh, putting that image base64 encoding the data URI inside a HTML template, and then we'll convert that into a Word document. So those are a couple of the scenarios we're going to try and run through. There's a lot to get through, and I'm conscious you probably don't want to watch this for 10 minutes, so I'll try and uh, uh, run through speedily, but at the right level of detail so you can recreate this. And of course, there's a accompanying blog post, so please check that out as well for some of the extra details if you need them. So first off, we'll start with the automated one, and we'll call this uh, blog post video QR code. Okay, so we need to uh, pick up when a file is created or modified would be the ideal. Uh, file created or modified. There we go. Something to watch out for here. If you if you do choose one in a folder, the trigger conditions which we're going to use uh, are a little bit different uh, and they don't work in the same way. So if you do get stuck and you can't get the trigger conditions to work, make sure you're using this when a file is created or modified properties only and not the one that's specific to a folder. Right. So we've got. Uh, we're going to choose a folder. Let me just double check. Yes, we are. So here we go, encoding documents, and I'm going to pick this blog QR code folder. So that's basically, we're monitoring that library called encoding documents and this particular folder for any changes in that folder. Okay, the next thing I'm going to do is do a git file content action. And there we go. And what we're going to do here is basically retrieve the file from SharePoint. Okay. Because we're going to use this file later on to pass the watermark action so that we can add the watermark to it. So let's snip down and um, we're going to pass in the identifier from the trigger action. So we get in the file that what the file for which this change uh, happened to we're going to the trigger, we're going to get the file content. It's a bit of a mouthful, wasn't it? Right, create QR code. So really simple to use. In the barcode data, I could type something in. Um, a URL, a string, whatever it, whatever I want to encode in the barcode, what I'm going to pass in is the value of the UR, URL metadata field. So if I nip over to SharePoint, it's going to be the value of that property in there. Okay. And in the image format, I'm just going to select PNG. So that's it. That action now will return a base64 encoded version of that image. So I click next and I'm going to choose add image watermark. And let's do that from Encodian. Watermark, please. Now I'm going to choose the advanced one because it gives me a bit of extra control. Now, this action is expecting both the file, so the source file that I'm going to apply the watermark to, and the image. So the source file is coming from SharePoint, so we want file name with extension. Uh, file content is the get file content from SharePoint action because that's the file. The watermark file name would be the watermark file name from create QR code. So we always generate a file name for you, so it's easy to use with other actions. And then watermark file content again in create QR just take QR. Uh, sorry, the file content. Now that really is all you need to do. I'll just nip down here. I'm just going to change the default opacity to one, which means 100%. Uh, I'm not going to change any of the offsets and move it around, and that should be all we need to do. The final few things we need to basically update. I'm going to do update file properties because what I want to do in SharePoint, because I've, I, I'm going to update the same file for which this flow triggered for. And obviously, if I do that, I'm going to get a recursive trigger where it's going to continually trigger itself. So to stop that, I've got this QR code added field and I'm going to set that to, um, to uh, true before I update the file. Now the reason why I do that is because once I've set it to true and then I update the file, then it's not going to trigger itself because I'm going to add a trigger condition to cover that. So that might sound a bit of a mouthful, but bear with me and I'll show you what I'm doing. Right, down here, 
Let's find the right one. Demo library is the same one we triggered from, so encoding documents and ID is the ID of the trigger action or the document that the uh, this flow was triggered for. And in QR OCAD, I'm gonna set that to yes, okay? So this is updating the file that the flow was triggered for and setting its QR code added field to, to yes. And the next thing I wanna do is actually update the actual file itself. So where are we? Update file, right. Uh, da, 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 da. Here we go, file identifier. We should be able to get Take the identifier from the trigger action. And the file content, we're gonna pass in the file content return from the image watermark action, okay? Now that flow, for all intents and purposes, is complete and will run through. The problem is, there's no trigger actions um, constraining when this fires. So if I run it, it will get in a, a continuous loop because I've triggered a change on a file, I've then updated that file, and it's gonna come straight back around and straight through and keep running through. So to prevent that, we're gonna add some trigger conditions. So let's go to settings, and we jump down, and we're gonna put some trigger conditions in here. Uh, and in true Blue Peter style, those of you who grew up in the UK, you'll know what I mean. We're going to add, oh sorry, I've got some that pre-prepared. So add conditions. Right, the first one ends with, so this says only fire for documents with an extension of .pdf. So basically only fire for PDF files. That, that narrows a few things down for me. The next one I've got is only fire where URL is not empty, okay? So this will only fire if the URL, this, this flow will only run through if the URL value of the item from which it was triggered from has got a value. And then the last one I'm gonna pop in is to say, don't fire if the QR code added value is true. So when I set that in here, to update file properties to yes, and then I update the file, um, that trigger, this one specifically will stop that from uh, recursively happening. Okay, so that's all done. I click save. So now we simply need to test the flow and we should be fine. So let's go in, go in here and we'll click, oh, saving still, sorry. Yep, slaved. Okay, so test. So I'll perform the trigger action and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna jump over to SharePoint. I did say at the start of this video, didn't I? I'll try not to run for 10 minutes, but I've got a feeling it's gonna be more like 15. Right, here we go. Let's wait for me to trigger it. So I'm gonna just nip over to here and I'm gonna give this document, it's a PDF document, which is good. And I know that the, currently that QR code value is defaulted to no. It's a bit of a UI, but you can see that it's no. Let's just go into here and we'll pop in a nice short URL. Click save. Now this should, trigger our flow. So let's nip back over here. So there we go, that's running through. So the QR's been created, adding image watermarks been done, and all the files been updated. So that seems to all have run perfectly smoothly. Um, let's just jump over here, that file should have been updated, so we'll just, yeah, a few seconds ago, let's click on the document. Hopefully, we should see, there's the QR code, bro. Now, slight problem is, I don't like the look of that. So let's see if we can make it look a little bit better. So to do that, you've got quite a bit of control here on the actual QR code action itself. So let's just go in here and click the advanced options and you can start to see some of the options we've got. So again, in true style, have prepped a little bit so that we can get this a little bit um, easier to, uh, to review. Right, so let's just quickly copy these across then. So we've got a 50 and a 50 auto set. Bear in mind, if you do fixed, um, we always suggest that you use nearest because um, you can create some odd sizing of the QR code, which can affect actually the ability to read the QR code. So by setting nearest, our back end will basically generate uh, a QR code that is definitely legible. So we, we'd say, you know, try setting it to nearest um, only going to fix if, you, if you're confident that you're not gonna skew the contents of that barcode. Okay, so now we've changed all the colors, we've changed the size. So the image that's gonna be generated is, is different in a sense. And the last thing we need to do here is just change the X and Y offsets in the watermark, uh, sorry, in the watermarking uh, action. 
put it in a slightly different place on the page. I'm going to say skip the first page, please. I'll click save. And we should be able to run that through. There we go. Here we go. So let's see what happens here. So that's all run through. And let's have a quick look at this document and see what we've got. Let's refresh that. So something odd's happened, bear with me a moment. Apologies, yeah, I just paused that for a moment I'd, uh, to figure out what I'd done and where I'd gone wrong. And it, uh, I was uh, I just realized I'm overwriting the file, of course, that had already had the QR code. So I've just rerun it, I've deleted the file, added the PDF back up and reset the URL to trigger the flow. And look, this time you can see that that, that document now, encoding a demo document, uh, .pdf has got a watermark, watermark, sorry, a QR code watermarked on it. Obviously, different colours pertaining to the configuration we gave the correct QR code action. So, uh, and obviously we've we've kind of put it in a slightly different or better uh, place using the advanced features of the watermark action. So, that's pretty cool. So, the second um, quick example I was going to run through is how we can actually get the um, this QR code image actually into a HDR template. So what we'll do here, we'll create another another flow. We'll just do an instant flow and we'll manually trigger it. So let's just call this blog post video. And we'll call it data URI. Same process again, we'll go straight in here with um, create a QR code. And there we go. And we'll manually just type in a string or a URL you want to encode. I'm going to use a PNG. Uh, the next step, I'm going to do a, let's get the encoding actions up. We'll select that and we'll go for, let's get convert HTML to Word and we'll call this QR code demo.docx. And there's some H, there's a HTML template in the blog post which you can use for HTML data. So let me just, oh, that's not the right one, but in the moment. Try this. There we go. Now, and the last step here is let's create a file. So create a file in SharePoint. Uh, and we're going to put it in the same place as before. That's nice and easy. And we'll go for encoding documents. Blog QR code. And we'll give it the file name from the convert HTML to Word action and the file content. So that's all going to work. Now, the obvious question here is how am I going to get this, the image generated by this action into this Word document? And it's pretty straightforward. So what we'll do, we'll add a compose action. Compose. And in the inputs, we're going to pop in a, an expression. So the expression uh, is a data URI expression. So the first part of it is data URI. And the second part of it is, it's a bit strange, but what we're going to do, we're, we're, this action, as most do, returns a base64 encoded version of the document, and the data URI is, is actually expecting binary, so we need to put in an expression inside the data URI to turn the base64 string into binary, so that it can then convert it into the data URI, which so happens to be a base64 string itself, a little bit odd, but hey-ho, so base64 to binary, and let's just move that over to the right side so you can see what I've typed. And what I need to pop in here now is actually the uh, the file the file content action returned from create QR, create QR code. So let me just select uh, that. I pop that in there, and that will get the file contents returned from the create QR code into a uh, data URI. So click OK. So that's that. Next, we just need to go back into the convert HTML to Word and find our image tag, which I've set up. And that data URI needs to go into the, in, to the source property of the image tag. So I'm just going to then select outputs. And that should be that. So let's give that a test. OK. Click continue. Run flow. Okay, let's jump over to 
to SharePoint. Let's close that down from earlier. And we should now have in this folder a Word document, which we do. And there is our QR code. So apologies, the video probably ran a little bit longer than, I, than I'd hoped it would, but hopefully that shows you how to use our create QR code action uh, to create the QR code pertaining to your configuration. You can use watermarking action to embed that on existing documents. You can obviously, as I've showed, interlace it into HTML to, to build documents from or even put it in emails. Um, I mean, pretty much you can do anything you can do with an image in Power Automate. Uh, if you've got any questions or need any support, please ping us at support.encodian.com uh, and check out the blog as well.